Later dan gisteren, als dat maar goed gaat. Daily Minutes nummer 1505. Met een uitzending van vandaag 23 december 2018. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Ik was vandaag uh, graag verder gegaan met de NBTV-experimenten. Helaas bleken de programma's onder Windows ook niet goed te werken. Dat werkte onder Linux ook niet goed. Het zijn Windows-programma's. Het lukte onder Windows bijvoorbeeld niet om bestanden uit te zenden. Of tenminste de bestanden om uit te zenden om die aan de software toe te voegen. Uh, onder Linux gaat dat wel, maar alleen voor stilstaande beelden. Bij gevolg kun je dus geen bewegend beeld mee versturen. En dan werkt het ook alleen nog maar voor de hybride mode. Ik ben inmiddels aan het zoeken naar alternatieven. Ik kwam erbij een site tegen van een uh, Nederlandse luisteramateur die echt een enorme hoeveelheid software op de pagina heeft staan. Waaronder meerdere NBTV programma's. Ik zal de link straks op de website zetten. Ik ga nog eens verder zoeken. Wie weet wat ik nog tegenkom. Uit frustratie zet ik vandaag dan maar vier SSTV beelden uit. Drie in PD50 en eentje in PD90. Dat is de ene laatste van die vier. Uh, het zijn stemmige kerstfoto's. Dus wel toepasselijk. Vandaag is er geen ERRL nieuws vanwege de feestdagen. Ik zet daarom het iets langere bulletin uit van de WIA in Australië. Dat is de oudste landelijke amateurvereniging die er is. Zoals gebruikelijk is de geluidskwaliteit bij de Aussies niet altijd optimaal. Dus ik hoop dat het allemaal goed over de stream komt. This is the Alara edition of the WIA National News Service, originating from VK1 WIA. Alara president Shirley, VK5 YL. Hi. Today our readers are Linda, VK7 QP, Lynn, VK4 SWE, and Leslie, VK5 Lima Oscar Lima. Before we get to the nitty gritty of the news, Alara would like to wish all our listeners a happy Christmas and a healthy new year. If you are traveling, please stay safe so that you can return home and play radio. Now to the nitty gritty. The VK Contest Club VK4 chapter are hosting an annual get together at Ipswich Jets for all radio amateurs to enjoy an afternoon of camaraderie. VK Contest Club VK1CC is a national organisation for all contest-minded hams in Australia with no entry fee and all amateur operators are welcome. To RSVP, follow the link at vkcc.com. The Great Eastern Fly-In, 12th to the 13th of January 2019. What happens at the fly-in? Pilots, their families and friends, fly in from all over Australia to enjoy a great summer holiday with a difference at Evans Head. You can expect no admission charge. How's that? Shuttle bus to Evans Head Town Centre, beaches, local sites and off-site accommodation. On-site catering, special dinner offer, local food markets as well as access to local cafes and restaurants. Joy flight for everybody's taste. Fly the family over the beach and spot the dolphins. Feel the breeze in your hair, thrill seekers fly upside down, and, for that once in a lifetime adventure, experience the raw power of a genuine warbird. The Great Eastern Fly In is a community event for all aviators and the general public, with plenty of opportunities to view aircraft and talk to pilots. Pilots, please note there is no air traffic control, and for airband transmissions north of Evans Head, check with CASA and or Air Services Australia. This all appeals to my sense of adventure, but alas, I live in VK5, but we're not far from the beach, guys. Scale out layer processor. This is complete with an embedded envelope tracking Chebyshev filter and utilizes a re-entrant logic circuit complete with a field programmable jitter-free ring modulator. That was a mouthful. Want to find out more on this just in time for Christmas gizmo? I'll reveal all later in this the WIA National News when I look at Media Watch. This is Lynn VK4 SWE on Swears Island in the Gulf of Carpentaria with the international news. New Zealand. Their regulator, RSM, have agreed to extend the one year 60 metre trial for a further six months to give more time for information gathering. ZL Hams, who already hold a sub licence, from NZART do not need to do anything. 
The trial will now finish on July 24, 2019. Hams who wish to operate on 60 metres must have a sub-licence from NZART. YL sails toward new world record. Our good friends over at Amateur Radio Newsline, edited by KD2GUT, Karen Eve Murray, says a YL on a ham radio journey is looking to set the record of a lifetime, and she's doing it solo. To all appearances, retired mathematician Jan Socrates, VE0JS, is alone aboard her sailing vessel, the SV Narida, as she makes her third attempt at setting a record. Jan is already the oldest woman to circumnavigate the globe solo, non-stop and unassisted, and is the first woman to do so from North America. Now 76, the experienced sailor simply wants to be the oldest person to accomplish that feat. Yes, to all appearances, she is indeed alone, but Newsline got on board with her briefly on 20 metres with the help of a Skype patch from her friend Jim Milner, WB2REM. She was, at the time of that QSO, 80 miles north-northwest of Ducey Island, which is near Pitcairn in the Pacific Ocean, at a good pace into her eight-month journey. She's now rounding the tip of South America, well on her way. When the sun shines brightly, Jan has the benefit of solar power. She has a little generator on board too, but for a sailboat like the Narida, the real power comes, of course, from riding the wind. There is, of course, also the radio to turn to, all 125 watts of HF signal, and she does that often. I spend a lot of time, actually. It's really great for me to have the radio. Um, I've, I've not been able to make the morning contacts that I normally do when I'm further north. Um, I get onto various lifts. Um, some of those contacts have come up to me on my skid over the daytime on my 17-metre um, uh, skid. Uh, so that, that seems pretty good. I've, um, in fact, I made contact yesterday with uh, Rick, uh, the U7CK up in Victoria, Canada, where I left from. He came up really strongly on 17 metres, which is great. And then other friends from the 7155 group, a lot of the 7165 group, uh, you know, we make contact from time to time. And then occasionally I'm able to get hold of my friends up on the West Coast. Um, there's a group there that come up on, on around 7147 in the morning, around sunrise. So I'm able to talk to them occasionally. So, yeah, it's been a really, really good uh, thing for me to have to have radio to make connections like that, right? Thanks, Jan. 33, and good luck. We now report on a silent key, a YL who was also a successful artist. Though many fans of Japanese manga comics came to know Momoko Sakura as a preeminent artist and illustrator, amateur radio operators knew her by her call sign, JI2EIT. The well-known creator of a popular anime series on Fuji TV became a silent key several months back. Momoko got her radio license while still in school and later illustrated covers of Japan's CQ ham radio magazine. Her animated TV series, which was about a curious little girl named Maruko, even featured amateur radio in one of its episodes. Momoko Sakura died of cancer. She was only 53. China. In the latest round of a tit-for-tat legal stoush between Apple and Qualcomm, China has moved to ban sales of most iPhone models. The existing ban will cover 10 to 15 percent of all current iPhones in China. What the current legal injunction imposed last week means is still unclear. Stereo.net.au say Apple insists that all of its iPhone models are on sale in China. Santa Claus from Romania. Santa Claus and his ham radio elves are coming back to Yankee Oscarland again for the third consecutive time. The YP Xmas call signs are already a tradition and the Romanian Radio Club Association, AWR, aims again to give to the radio community moments of joy around their winter holiday time. The beautiful Santa Claus story on radio waves started by Finland's radio amateurs OH9SCL in 1986 and later the OF9X team 
has been taken over in recent years by different colleagues from several European countries. Today, in 2018, the largest team with activators are in all the districts of Yankee Oscar. French ham radio license fee. REF reports that the Finance Committee of the Senate has tabled an amendment to the French Finance Act 2019 concerning the annual amateur radio license fee. The amendment says that collecting the license fee costs over 400% of the amount recovered and proposes removing this tax. Canada. Artist made a radio out of a kitchen sink. The IEEE Spectrum magazine reports on Amanda Dawn Christie's work, which commemorates the fading glory of shortwave radio. Some artists work in oils or marble. Amanda Dawn Christie works in radio. Not radio in the sense of performing on air, but radio in the sense of the giant cultural and technological phenomenon that is broadcasting, and specifically shortwave broadcasting. Christie's art draws from shortwave's history, representing it in sculpture, performance, photography, and film. Her focus is the life of the Radio Canada International, RCI, transmitter complex, located in Sackville, New Brunswick, near Christie's hometown. Those towers were always just a part of the landscape that I grew up around, says Christie. It took a radio building workshop to spark her interest. I built a radio out of a toilet paper tube. I thought I did a great job because I picked up Italian radio. It turned out I did not. I was just really close to this international shortwave site. USA. Vi Barrett, W6CBA, 70 years a radio ham. The Orange County Register reports one of the FBI's first female dispatchers continues to break stereotypes from her Fullerton living room. As a teenager in Los Angeles, Vi fell in love with ham radio and became one of the few women to enter what was then considered a man's world of electronics. She heard about Amateur Radio's annual event where hams gather, set up antennas and invite the public. In 1946, Dad agreed to take her to Baldwin Hills where ham operators carried their rigs. Are you a ham? One gentleman asked. No, Barrett confessed. Would you like to be? Oh, would I? At that moment, Barrett found her first Elmer. Then she found another and another. In 1947, she sat next to the ham radio operator who patched Tor Heardell's location aboard the Contiki to Washington, D.C. The following year, at age 17, she made her way to the federal building in downtown Los Angeles and took her ham test. She was the only female in the room. A few hours later, she walked out with a ham radio license. Call letters W6CBA. This is Lynn, BK4SWE, from Swears Island in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Wishing a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all. This is the Alara edition of the WIA National News Service, originating from VK1 WIA. Alara President Shirley, VK5YL. Media Watch. CQDA TV issue 66 magazine is now available for free download. In this Christmas issue, News and World Roundup. SpaceX launch of a Falcon 9 block fire rocket, 70 cm versus 23 cm band activity, DATV Express project report, the ABC of broadcast video tape recording, and matching 50 ohms to 75 ohms. Electronics Techno Babble Buzzword Jargon Generator. At the beginning of this news this week, I made mention of the Scale Out Layer 2 processor. What on earth is it? Well, surely, have you ever heard people using techno babble or electronics engineering speak with phrases that sound impressive but mean nothing? You too can have some fun with an online techno babble jargon generator. It is amazing how much jargon and techno babble is used within electronic engineering. Sometimes people can want to sound impressive by using all the latest electronics jargon. How often does all this jargon sound a little forced? Often one can ask if they know what it actually means. If you want to join them and have a laugh, use the electronics jargon or te techno babble generator. It randomly generates some really impressive sounding electronics engineering phrases that you can drop into conversation, 
and have no fear of being contradicted because they mean absolutely nothing. The link is in the text edition of this news, best read at wia.org.au. Intruder Watch, Enforcement Zone Broadcasters intruding on exclusive amateur radio frequencies The International Amateur Radio Union Region 1 monitoring system reports that Radio Hargeisa in Somaliland has returned to 7.12 MHz after a break of several weeks, while Radio Eritrea has been reported on 7.150 and 7.180 MHz. Radio Sudan has been transmitting on 7.205 MHz with excessive splatter. A Russian over-the-horizon radar has returned to 20 meters on 14.335 up to 14.348 MHz. IARUMS reported digital signals from the Polish military daily on 7.001.8 MHz where amateur radio has a worldwide primary allocation. IARUMS has received reports of short beeps exactly one second apart as well as frequency hopping between 10.108 and 10.115 MHz and 18.834 and 18.899 MHz. The signals are believed to emanate from a site near Chicago associated with an FCC licensed experimental operation involved with low latency exchange trading on HF. Good morning. This is Linda VK7QP presenting Ham Radio Operational News. It's a contact sport. All major Australian contests, rules and results are on the contest section of the WIA website, including the inaugural Green Keys Night, set for New Year's Day, January the 1st, and the NZART Portable Activity Day, also on New Year's Day. The ARRL RTTY Roundup, January 5th to 6th, this contest will, for the first time, permit the use of FT8, as well as traditional RTTY. The Summer VHF UHF Field Day, Saturday the 12th and Sunday the 13th of January. The John Moyle Field Day is March the 17th and 18th. The 20th Harry Angel Memorial Sprint, May the 4th. The Trans-Tasman Low Band Contest, July the 20th. And the VK Remembrance Day contest is August the 17th and 18th. The Long Island Club hosts a seasonal on-air event. In New York, the Great South Bay Amateur Radio Club believes there's no place like being with hams for the holidays, so they're hosting an event to celebrate the season. A 12 Days of Christmas special event station. This special event started on Friday, December the 14th and runs for, yes, 12 days, which would make it end on Christmas Day. Each day has its own special one-by-one -one call sign, like WTP is the partridge in a pear tree station, or the W2L is for nine ladies dancing station. Through the DX window... TM64YL achieved 5,000 contacts. A de-expedition by 14 women notched up 5,000 contacts using the call sign TM64YL from the island of Nuan Moutier, IOTA EU-064. Iceland's National Amateur Radio Society, the IRA, reports tm 6 4YL was a call sign for a YL DX expedition that was QRV from the island of Noirmoutier in France during August 25th to 31st. Elvira IV3FSG was active as E44YL from Palestine through the past week. SSB, RTTY and FT8 so if you did work her, QSL via IK3GES. While operator Chi 
7L3PFH will be QRV from Saipan in the Mariana Islands as KH0TG from 26th December to the 1st of January. She'll be on 160 metres to 20 metres CW and SSB. QSL manager is JL1UTS. Good news for ZT1T. The South African state-owned power company has given an undertaking that there'll be no rolling blackouts until the new year. This means that ZT1T will be operating as usual between Christmas and New Year without the threat of power being switched off without warning mid-operation. ZT1T, a unique prefix, will be used to celebrate the 8th Christmas after the rescue of Susan ZS1AFR and husband Tom ZS1AFS from the South Atlantic in February 2011. They had to abandon their yacht when the fitting holding the forestay to the stem head of their yacht broke. They were rescued and returned home via the UK. This year, operation will be on 40 metres, 20 metres, 15 metres and 10 metres. Net advice. Anne Renton, Memorial Net, this Tuesday. One of the friendliest radio nets in the land happens Tuesday evening, December 25th, from 7.30pm, true time, on the Townsville UHF repeater. It's the Anne Renton Memorial Net Christmas Night Bumper Edition. The net is open to young and old, YL or OM, and is a golden opportunity for anyone who needs practice on air to go onto the net as a second operator. The net will also be accessible via the VK4TUB All-Star Link 46740 and the VK4TUB Echo Link node 837230. Let's see if the YLs can outnumber the OMs. That concludes the operational news from Linda, VK7QP. Happy Christmas. You're tuned to the Alara edition of the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service through amateur radio station VK1 WIA. Hi, this is VK5 Lima Oscar Lima. Leslie. Worldwide Special Interest Group News. Digital. Attention, logbook of the world users. The latest version of the Logbook of the World's Trusted QSL Program, TQSL version 2 4.3, is now available at the link in the text edition of this, the WIA National News. TQSL is available for Microsoft Windows PC, Apple OS X, Mac and Linux operating systems. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Females in Radio. September 2019, the Scandinavian YL Radio Operators Convention will be in Norway. Ingrid, LA8FOA, is your contact. YLRL awards scholarships to three promising amateurs. The Young Ladies Radio League has just awarded three promising amateurs with scholarships to continue their studies as we hear from Radio Newsline's Heather MB, KB3TZD. Jordan Mann, W1KXJ, Anna Veal, W0ANT, and Trina Broyce, KI6GZG. And they all have a good reason to smile. They've all been named YLRL scholarship winners, receiving gifts that honor three silent keys, Ethel Smith, K4LMB, Martha Wessel, K0EPE, and Mary Lou Brown, NM7N. Jordan is a computer science major at MIT and has been an intern at NASA. Anna, a graduate of the STEM High School in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, plans to study computer science at the University of Colorado. She's also a past winner of Amateur Radio Newsline's Young Ham of the Year Award. Trina, who is a doctoral candidate at Colorado Technical University, has two master's degrees and teaches online as an adjunct professor at Brigham Young University. I'm Heather MB, KB3 TZD. Thanks, Heather. Now to the final frontier. NASA names Holly Red Riding's new chief flight director. 
In her new role, Ridings will manage the group of 32 active flight directors and flight directors in training who oversee a variety of human spaceflight missions involving the International Space Station, including integrating American-made commercial crew spacecraft into the fleet of vehicles servicing the orbiting laboratory, as well as Orion spacecraft missions to the Moon and beyond. Ridings earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from Texas A&M University in 1996. She joined NASA in 1998 as a flight controller in the Thermal Operations Group. She was selected as a flight director in 2005. And since then, she has served as the lead flight director for several missions, including International Space Station Mission Expedition 16 in 2000. And seven to 2008, Space Shuttle Program Mission STS-127 in 2009, and the first SpaceX Dragon Cargo Spacecraft Mission to the Space Station in 2012. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA, AF-008. Whether you're working on a kit build or troubleshooting an antenna issue, Patience is always a virtue that pays off for amateur radio operators. Then, of course, you have Luigi, IV3XNF, for whom patience proved a virtue for QSL cards. He only discovered recently that his 1993 contact with FT4WD on Crozet Island was apparently overlooked, so quietly, in fact, that Luigi himself believed he had actually got the QSL card from long ago before discovering that, no, it apparently was never sent. Realising this, Luigi wrote to the QSL manager, Norbert F6AXX, and then settled back into his weight. Late last month, a jubilant Luigi posted a picture of the card on Twitter, which featured penguin after penguin after penguin on the sub-Antarctic island, and the proud 5 and 9 signal report for the SSB contact with a French operator named Christian who held the call sign FD1NOG at the time. His contact with IOTA AF008 has thus been confirmed at last. As Luigi wrote on Twitter, after 25 years, never say never. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, ILLW. The 100th entry for the 2019 International Lighthouse Lightship Weekend, ILLW, has just been received from DL1SWB, the 2019 event to be held on the 17th to 18th of August. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Radio Amateur Young Timers, Tim Peake, KG5BVI or GB1SS, inspired 2 million young people. A new report has found more than 2 million young people in the UK engaged with education and outreach programs linked to Tim Peake's Principia Mission to Space. The report highlights the role of ARIS and amateur radio during the mission. The UK Space Agency ran a £3 million education campaign alongside the mission to the International Space Station, which blasted off three years ago. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Radio Scouting. Good morning, my name is Cara Merlo, VK3FKLP. I would like to remind all amateurs that the VI25AJ Special Event Station will be active at the Australian Scout Jamboree between the 4th to the 14th of January 2019. We want you in the log to help us demonstrate our great hobby to over 2,000 scouts. Details available via our QRZ page. On behalf of the VI25AJ radio team, I would like to wish you all a merry and safe Christmas. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Rescue Radio YSN Queensland holds a net every Sunday on 7075 kilohertz from 8.30 a.m. The net calls in regular stations and then invites new stations to call in 
and if conditions are poor on 7 MHz, net control might move to around 3.6 MHz. Special interest groups, stamp collecting amateurs, one for you Marilyn, VK5DMS, the Brazilian Postal Administration have just issued on December 14 a souvenir sheet of stamps related to antique radios. This has been Leslie, VK5 Lima Oscar Lima, for the WIA National Broadcast. 2019 Social Scene, VK4 TARC Australia Day Long Weekend Family Radio Camp will be on the 24th to the 28th of January. VK7 will be Meet the Voice event at Ross on the 23rd and 24th of March. In April, VK4 Redfest 2019. Merry Christmas from the Redcliffe and District Radio Club here in South East Queensland. This is Robert Thompson, VK4TFN. On behalf of us all, I would like to wish you all a safe and happy Christmas and New Year holiday. Please don't forget Redfest to be held on the 13th of April 2019. We will raffle a very special prize. As the event draws closer, listen for further announcements. Also, go to www.redcliffradioclub.org.au. You can also find us on Facebook. So, if you plan to drive, plan not to drink. And if you plan to drink, well then, plan not to drive. Merry Christmas, drive carefully, and we'll see you all in the new year. Thank you, and 73s. 2020 Social Scene. Alaramit 2020 Bendigo. October 2020 in Bendigo in Victoria. Heidi... VK3FHID and Jenny VK3WQ are leading the team who are planning an eventful weekend. This team is meeting regularly and are looking forward to seeing you in Bendigo. We had such fun in Cairns, so I expect to see lots more of you in Bendigo. Thank you to our readers Linda, Lynn and Leslie, the three L's, for joining me today. Remember, don't drink and drive during this festive season. Happy Christmas. This is Shirley, VK5YL, going clear. 3373 and 88. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Foundations of Amateur Radio Often we forget the things we've done or achieved and every now and then it seems like a solid use of time to reflect a little on what went before and what that did. Recently I asked various amateurs what they were proud of having done or achieved in the past year. Their little personal victory, their thrill to keep coming back to the hobby. For me it was the research and production behind Is Man-Made Noise Really Vertical? It took several weeks to research and produce and received only a handful of responses on social media or via email, even though it was downloaded and read about 10,000 times or so. For me, it gives me a thrill to have spent time digging into the who, what, why, when, where and how of a topic that seems steeped in myth and often remains unexplained or unexplored. One amateur shared that they'd made their first HF contact from Perth to Romania. One had gotten their licence this year after procrastinating for 30 years. Another came back to the hobby after being away for a decade. There was an amateur who managed to set up a rotatable Yagi on 6 metres. There were a couple of amateurs who have each been building a repeater network. Another who built a 6 metre Yagi antenna and pre-amplifier. Another who erected their tower after 5 years. Another who managed to get an article published in the National Amateur Radio magazine. Another who set up their G5RV and connected it to an air spy to make whisper spots after only a year and a half in the hobby. One amateur got their license upgrade and is looking forward to learning CW next year. Another got their station fully set up and returned to being an active radio amateur. There was an amateur who managed to get through a 20 meter SSB pileup. A friend told me that their achievement of the year was to listen, both to others and themselves. There was an amateur who used 10 watts to make a contact between Massachusetts and New Zealand, one who worked the SO50 satellite with a Beofang radio and a rubber duck antenna. One amateur managed to work AO92 with the same type of gear, made two contacts and even has a recording from one of them. 
One amateur celebrated the arrival of their Bengali key, considering it a Christmas before Christmas. One amateur who made their first contact between Texas and the Netherlands used a 20-metre self-built Moxon beam constructed from wire and fishing poles. There was an amateur who got their licence and is impatient to get on air. It's been a week of waiting. One person upgraded to the top licence class and actually started operating. One aspiring amateur was inspired by how easy it was to get licensed and is planning for their entrance as a licensed TAM in the new year. Mind you, that didn't stop him from listening and decoding a NOAA satellite image using an RTL dongle. One amateur decided that he just couldn't wait for his license, studied three days and passed his test. He's now building his first radio, looking forward to making a contact. There's an amateur who joined the ranks and is now looking forward to going for an upgrade to his license next year. One ham has been licensed for 10 months and is already having a blast, erected his first real tower and now has a VHF antenna at 60 foot. That's 20 metres up in the air. There's one amateur who's been learning about what a cheap RTL SDR dongle can do with SDR Sharp and he's saving up for an ICOM 7300. He's finding it tough to balance between spending his money on high-end audio and saving for his ICOM. Take it from me, the radio wins every time. I've only scratched the surface of the activities undertaken in the past 12 months, but it's clear that being an amateur is a positive experience for many people. Getting on air and making noise, learning, having fun, trying things and exploring this wonderful hobby is ingrained in much of the community. Before wrapping up, I'd also like to credit Will, VK6UU, for independently asking the same question, and for the countless amateurs who responded, many of whom I wasn't able to squeeze in this time around. Perhaps I should do this more often. What's your proudest moment in the past 12 months? Let me know. I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot Lima Alpha Bravo. Deed ik me het zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.p0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl.
Amiga, fala um Naruto.